Hi, welcome back to Subramaniam Shankaran from I2 Plus UK with you for mastering CISSP lectures. Okay, the other cipher that we want to have a look at today is uh, Vijayanaya cipher. Okay, so it's one of the best known polyalphabetic cipher, as I told you in the earlier videos. If the cipher text is going to give you more than one, uh, I'm sorry, if the plain text is going to give you more than one cipher text, we call that as a polyalphabetic cipher. Usually the polyalphabetic ciphers, uh, the algorithm inherently will have uh, those characteristics or with the introduction of initialization vector. Okay, I wanna have, uh, which is always called the salt or uh, uh, nonce. Okay, so you're gonna have um, uh, the mono alphabetic cipher converted to a polyalphabetic cipher. We had an illustration in one of the previous videos. Now, in the last video, we had a look at the Playfair cipher where we, there was a key table in five by five matrix and I, swear, I, was, re, I, I was replaced by J. And um, you know, we had to divide the plain text and paths of letters with the introduction of a Z in between of the, if there's an identical pair, we also had a filler or a padding. It was going to end with an uh, odd, odd character, like an odd number basically. Yeah, so this is on the Vijanaya cipher. This was uh, discovered by one of the French diplomats in 1586. Okay, now this is the key for the Vijanaya cipher, okay? The table for the Vijanaya cipher, rather. Now the, the Playfair cipher had a random distribution of the alphabets in its table, but the Vijanaya cipher is simple. It's 26 by 26 matrix, A to Z, and the next uh, character, the row starts with uh, the next alphabet is B. So A to Z for the first or the first uh, column and a B to A for the second or second column, and C to B for the third or third column, yeah? This continues for the complete uh, 26 by 26 matrix. Now, the way that we, we work for original cipher is like this, okay? Attack at the, okay, the commonly used uh, plain text for demonstration. Now we have a key, okay? So let's uh, say key is uh, lemon. Okay, we use the word uh, lemon. Okay, and this uh, key needs to be distributed securely to the destination. So in a way, it's like symmetric encryption. Okay, in the sense like, you know, we have to distribute the key securely to the destination. Now, why this key needs to be secured? Because there's no secrecy in the table. There's, there's no rocket science in creating a table, which is A to Z, not like a Playfair cipher. In the Playfair cipher, uh, the random distribution of alphabets, so the same uh, table need to be available at the destination. So we have to securely distribute the table, okay? And the algorithm are the rules, basically, okay? There is no key as such on a Playfair cipher. But in Virginia cipher, there is a key, okay? This key needs to be securely deliver to the destination or convey to the destination rather because the word because there's no secrets in the table okay so uh, looking at the um, you know uh, plain text and the uh, table we got a here we got l here so a and l, l becomes a and l becomes l we got t here and we got e here and t and e becomes x t and m okay t and m TNM time material becomes uh, TNM becomes F and A and O A and O becomes O C and K C is here and then K is here C and K becomes M okay and K and L K is here and then L is here K and L becomes V okay and A E a E becomes E and then T M. Okay, time and material again uh, becomes M. T O T and O becomes a H. H and N. H is here. N is here. H and N becomes U. And then E and L. E is here and L is here. E and L becomes uh, E and L becomes P. D and E, D, E becomes H, A, M becomes M, W, O. Okay, so W is here, 
O C O W and O becomes K. N and N. Okay, N is here and then N is here. Okay, so that becomes N is here and then N is here. Sorry, the N is here, N is here, that becomes A. Okay, so attack of the dawn is uh, the plain text and the cipher text with the Virginia cipher becomes CT. FCT, sorry, the CT becomes LX, F, O, M, V, E, M, H, U, P, H, M, K, A. Okay, so if you want to have um, the lemon at the destination, so you have the L, you find where the L is. Okay, this becomes A. Okay, so I have the E. Okay, and then you have uh, where the uh, X is. E is here and X is here. E is here, X is here, it becomes T. So this is the way that you actually decrypt. So uh, the Virginia cipher, the table isn't a secret. Okay, but the way that you're going to uh, convey uh, the key element to the destination is something that we need to stress upon. If there's a man in the middle attack and they find out, uh, they know what the key is, okay? And the same messenger is going to take the cipher text, he can easily decipher the cipher text and get to know what the plain text is. So this is the illustration for Virginia Cipher. Next, we are going to have a look at um, Vernum Cipher, which is uh, otherwise known as the one-time pad. Okay, must be used only once. Otherwise, we don't call it a one-time pad. Okay, it's a one-time pad. In fact, the veritable base for the one-time one password that we actually receive now, okay, that we use now, okay, it is received now when the trust boundary changes when you make an transaction on the internet. You would make a credit card payment or debit card payment or the banking transaction whenever you want to transfer the money, then you know the trust boundary changes from the public to confidential to the critical. Okay, so uh, you receive an OTP if there's a provision or sometimes it's also based on the authentication app like a Facebook or the Google, etc. Again, there's a based on a pad like how we discussed with the Playfair that it, the pad must be securely distributed as a destination and the one-time pad also must be securely distributed destination. It must be the same size of the text or even larger, but cannot be less. Okay, if it's less, then you cannot do a complete encryption to the plain text. Pad must be made of a truly random values, okay, like how the play fair cipher is. Okay, if it's, if it's going to be uh, not a random values, it might reveal a pattern and deciphering it could become very easy even without a pad. Pad must be secured at both ends until it is used. Once it's used, you have to dispose it. If you want to call that as a one-time pad, otherwise no. Okay, so we covered the Virginia cipher and the one-time pad today. And in the last video, we covered the Playfair cipher, thus establishing a decent foundation before we actually get onto the algorithms. We already have a video on data encryption standard, double disk and the triple disk. What is the meat in the middle attack for the double disk? and how the triple disk actually works. And the next video, we're going to have a look at the advanced encryption standard and how it works. Thanks for watching this video. Stay connected for your CSSP lectures. Wish you all the best. Cheers then.